Hi again! Welcome to Lesson 7 of Designing Database Solutions with Microsoft SQL Server 2019. For today's topic, you are going to learn how to select records from multiple related tables using cross-join. We'll also work with sets operators such as union, intersect, and except. And finally, we'll compare the use of join statements with subqueries. To demonstrate this, I'll work with the same database that we used in Lesson 6. From this diagram, you can recall that one department can have many teachers, a teacher is an employee, and a teacher can attend to one or more meetings. Similarly, a meeting can have one or more faculty attendees through this junction table, faculty meetings. I've added another table here, politicians. This table is not related to any of the tables in our database. So it has a primary key ID of type integer, a surname, given name, and is active fields. I'll open a new query window and let's check all the records from these two tables, employees and meetings. So, we have five employees and three meetings. Let's start with cross-join. The SQL cross-join produces a result set which is the number of the rows in the first table multiplied by the number of rows in the second table. So, I'll copy-paste this and select everything from employees, cross-join, meetings. This produces a Cartesian product of the join tables, employees, and meetings. In short, it is a multiplication operation in the set theory that generates all the ordered pairs of the given sets. You can see here that all five employees have meeting ID number one. Each also have meeting ID number two, as well as meeting ID number three. I can start by selecting all the meetings and then cross-join with employees and it will still produce the same result set. Three meeting IDs by five employees make a total of 15 records, as in 3 times 5. I'll simplify this to show you only the meeting ID, last name, and then first name. So, for meeting ID number 1, we have 5 employees, similar to meeting ID number 2, and then meeting ID number 3. The union operator is used to combine the result set of two or more select statements. I'll select both the employees and then the politicians table. These two tables are not related in our database, although they share similar fields like the ID of type int, the last name and the first name are both nvarcar50, same with the surname and the given name. Based on our records, we have 5 employees and 4 politicians. When I insert the union statement in between these two select statements, and execute this, it throws an error, saying error converting data type varchar to big int. When using the union operator, every select statement must have the same number of columns, and the columns must have similar data types. So I'll get the last name and first name from the employees table, and then the surname and the given name from the politicians. When I execute this, it returns seven records. Let's take a look again at the contents of both tables. Now, from the five employees and four politicians, Joe Edgo and Clark Kent existed in both tables. And when you use union operator, it selects distinct records by default. That's why you only see seven records. It removes the duplicate records. Also, the default order is ascending using the first column. We can rewrite this query same as this, placing a distinct clause and then specifying the order by clause in ascending. This will produce exactly the same result. So what if you want to include duplicate values? Then instead of union, you must use union all. I'll use the same code and then type union all and when I execute this, it returns 9 records, 5 employees, and then 4 politicians. Records are literally stuck from the first table to the second table, regardless of the duplicate data. And you can use union to join two or more tables like this.
you have records from the first table, second table, and then third table. Another set operator used in SQL Server is called intersect. Intersect is used to return the records that are in common between two select statements or datasets. If a record exists in one query but not in the other, it will be omitted from the intersect result. I'll select the last name and first name from the employees table and then use the intersect to join the surname and the given name from the politician's table. As a result, it only returns two records, Joe Edgo and Clark Kent. And if we take a look at the employee's record, you'll see that only Go and Kent existed here as well as in the politician's table. With this result, you observe a similar behavior when using inner join. The major difference is that intersect removes duplicate records while inner join does not. Another set operator is the except operator. It has comparable behavior with the outer join statement. Except is used to combine two select statements and returns rows from the first select statement that are not returned by the second select statement. This means Except returns only rows which are not available in the second select statement. I'll use the same code and replace this with the word except. Now notice that all the employees' records were displayed except for the two records, Go and Kent, that are also present in the second table politicians. Now, I can change the arrangement of the select statement and place the politician table as my first set and the employees table as my second set. Here, you can see that out of the four politicians, it should return all records except from these two, Go and Ken, that also existed in the employees table. And sure, we only have two records returned. Aside from SQL join statements and set operators, there is another important concept in SQL that you need to learn when creating queries that involve multiple tables, the subquery. A subquery is a query that is nested inside a select, insert, update, or delete statement, or inside another subquery. A subquery can be used anywhere an expression is allowed. A subquery is also called an inner query or inner select, while the statement containing a subquery is also called an outer query or outer select. Many transact SQL statements that use join can alternatively be formulated as a subquery. Consider this example. I'll retrieve all records from departments, and one department can have one or more teachers, so I'll retrieve all records from teachers as well. Now, Say I want to retrieve all teachers under Computer Engineering Department. Well, we can use the inner join to accomplish this. As we've learned in Lesson 6, I'll select everything from teachers as A and then join departments as B on teachers.department equal to departments.depcode. And to filter the records, I'll say where the department name is equal to Computer Engineering. And when I execute, I only retrieve one record, which is what we expect, it's teacher103. Let me display only the fields from teacher's table. And now to accomplish the same thing using a subquery, I'm going to start with a query that selects everything from the department's table where the department name is computer engineering. And since the depth code field is the only field that we need to link to the teacher's table, I'll select only this field. Now, this query returns only one field and only one row. This is what we call scalar value. Having this result, we can use this anywhere an expression is allowed in another query. Say, I'll create another select statement here to retrieve all records from teacher's table. And then, I'm going to filter the result of this to only retrieve where the department is equal to, and then I'll enclose this other query in a parenthesis, making it in this what we call subquery. 
the return scalar value of this subquery, which is depth code, will be used as part of the where expression to filter the result of the outer query. And when I execute this, I was able to retrieve only the teachers under computer engineering department. And this result is similar to the one when we use the inner join statement. Now, suppose I want to retrieve the last name and first name information of this teacher, and we know that these fields are stored in another table, employees. So, using the inner join, I can join this to the third table, employees, as C, on teachers.employeeid equals employees.employeeid. Then, I'll replace the selected fields to only display the employee's information. And when I run this, Teacher103 is actually employee John Doe. Now, to accomplish the same result using subquery, I'll copy and paste this previous code that we have, and let me indent this as I will use this query as our new subquery. And then, I'll create another outer query that selects everything from the employees table. And then, filter only the employees where the employee ID matches the employee ID returned by this inner query. Make sure to enclose the subquery with a parenthesis. When I execute this one, it will generate an error saying, only one expression can be specified in the selected list. This happened because our subquery is returning multiple fields, and our outer query is only expecting only one field and only one row of data, a scalar value employee ID. So, I'll replace this asterisk with only the employee ID of the teacher's table. So, just to recap, the innermost subquery returns a scalar value, depth code, the outer subquery returns another scalar value of employee ID. And the outer query will use this to filter the employee ID in the employee's table, giving us the same result as with the three table inner join. Now let's have another example. Say instead of computer engineering teachers, we want to retrieve all employees under the information systems program. So I'll copy the same code and simply change the WHERE clause of this innermost subquery to Information Systems Program. So this returns a depth code of ISP and it will be used to filter the department field from the teacher's table. Now you'll notice that this outer subquery returns not just one employee ID but three employee IDs. And if we use an equal operator to match these three employee IDs, it throws an error that says subquery returned more than one value. And this is what we call list value subquery, wherein these operators are not allowed to be used. So instead of using this equal operator, which will not work for a list value subquery, I'll change it to the in operator. And then when I execute this, it returns the three employee records. You can use the in operator when you have multiple options in the where clause. Select everything from employees where employee ID in open and close parentheses and then specify all the possible employee ID 101, 102, 103, and so on. Or you can replace it with a more conventional logical operator or to say where employee ID equals 101 or employee ID equals 102 or employee ID equals 103. Let's have another example. I want to retrieve all the employees from Information Systems Program with a rate of above 650. So I'll just copy this code. I'll check the result first. We have employee 101, 102, and 104. And the rate per hour field is in the teacher's table. Let me check that one first. We can see that Teacher 101 and 102 are above 650, and Teacher 104 is not. So we are expecting only these two records. In order to filter it, I'll place another condition in this middle subquery. I'll use the logical AND, because aside from department equal to ISP, it should also limit the records where 
rate per unit is above 650. In this case, it should be employee ID 101 and employee ID 102. I'll execute this and we were able to retrieve these two records. And finally, let's have another example that is similar to lesson 6. Suppose we want to retrieve all teachers who did not attend any meeting. Let's check the content of the faculty meetings, teachers, and employees table. So we have teachers 102, 103, and 104 attended a meeting. And out of the four teachers, only one did not attend. And it is teacher 101 with the name of Mark Sam. And to accomplish this, I'm going to select everything from the teacher's table except those that exist in the faculty meetings table. Now, I only want the employee ID field and the faculty field. Looking at it, 102, 103, and 104 exist in faculty meetings table, so this will not be included in the result. And when I execute this, only Teacher 101 is returned. Now, I'll create an outer query that retrieves all records from the employees table, where employee ID is in the list of employee IDs returned by this subquery. And when I execute this, only one record is returned. Employee 101, Mark Sam. When writing queries involving multiple tables, you can combine join sets operators together with subqueries to produce the desired result set. In Transact SQL, Microsoft states that there is usually no performance difference between a statement that includes a subquery and a semantically equivalent version that does not. However, in some cases where existence must be checked, a join yields a better performance. Up next, we'll learn how to modify records using the insert, update, and delete SQL commands. Again, thanks for watching and if you learned something of value here, please click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials. This is Joe Edgo and hope to see you in the next video lecture.